Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette, and I'm here on a Friday morning, and Fridays often for me about are about even more play and experimentation. And I was at an event recently where someone won in a raffle this beautiful box of gouache and a whole bunch of other things as well. And um, she was sweet, and I had really wanted the gouache. It put a whole bunch of raffle tickets in there, and she was so sweet and gifted me the gouache, which is my daughter's favorite medium to paint with. And um, getting my screens all set up here. And uh, I was so grateful, and Maggie's excited to have gouache to play with when she comes home to visit this summer. But this is kind of like a fun reveal to open up all these little containers of gouache. So I thought while I was getting these open, I would just tell you a little bit about, that one's kind of hard to open, the others were easy to open, about painting in your PJs with Manette. So this is a weekly series where I am sharing my creative process that I call MAP my morning art activation routine. And what I mean by that is I'm always looking for a poem, a prompt. This week it's birds, something that's inspiring me in the moment. Look at these gorgeous colors. And I'm bringing that into my writing and visual arts or expressive arts practices. And I believe deeply in the power of creative process to be one of the best ways to connect with our own inner knowing. We can easily get caught up. Blanca, you're up early this morning on a Friday. Good morning. We can easily get caught up in the product and worrying about outcomes of what it is that we're up to trying to make something, you know, that looks like what we see in our heads. And I love it when I make pretty pictures, but what I love even more is when the art becomes my teacher, when it becomes a gift and an opportunity for deepening my own self-knowledge, my own self-awareness, for connecting with that innermost voice within. So for me, what I'm sharing here on painting in your PJs is really all about that practice, that morning art activation routine. And this is my daily practice. I do this process even when I am not streaming live. And in the cases where I'm not streaming live, I might be working on Canvas, I might be doing a lot more writing, but I tend to, every single day, make some time for writing and art making. And it has been such a game changer in my life. So I have probably been doing this process really consistently. So I've been painting for a decade, but I'm trying to remember when I started my morning practice. Probably at the beginning of the pandemic, I got really serious about this morning process. I had recently done, I know, right? Me too. This is gouache. It's new to me. It's my daughter's favorite medium. It's not one I know very much about, but Fridays are about experimentation and play. So I thought I would play with some gouache this morning and see what it does, which is going to mean a little bit of swatching and some play time. But all of a sudden, you know, I really got to that place where I realized that I was really grumpy if I wasn't making time for art in my morning practice. And I do my morning practice even when I'm on the road. When I'm on the road, it might be some colored pencil and some journaling. But I've also found that what really helps me, and I was talking to one of my dear friends about this, like sometimes it's so hard to get started. And so the, the thing that can help us get started is there's a couple of things that can really help us get started with our 
own morning art practice. Obviously, watching a series like this one, you know, is a great idea to come in and get that fresh inspiration or any of the other bazillion amazing YouTube videos that are out there. So YouTube, I'm just cleaning off my fingers where all that gouache came off those lids. Look at all those pretty, pretty colors. Having a journaling prompt and rather than using it as journaling, using it as a visual prompt, like there are so many different things that we can do to get ourselves started instead of wondering, I don't know how to start, right? I don't know how to start. So I want to play with this gouache a little bit this morning. Our affirmation today is I allow myself to take things one moment at a time. I allow myself to take things one moment at a time. And I think in mixed media art, art journaling, creative process, we can only take it one moment at a time. We can't, and same with self uh, discovery and personal growth. We can't do it all at once, right? We really have to allow things to unfold on their own. And our bird this morning is this beautiful little goldfinch, which got printed out on cardstock accidentally from where I was printing something else. Try not to get paint all over him, but these are very prevalent around here. They have a beautiful song. And my husband's mom, Evelyn, she always called them like little lemon bombs because they look like little yellow lemons when they're flying through the air. You don't see the black. All you see is that gorgeous yellow. So we're going to honor the goldfinch today. And I'm continuing to work in my affirmations journal. And I think this will be the last day of birds. We've been doing birds this week. Last week we just did some other forms of affirmation. Love these cute kitty cats that came out to play. Still have a few pages in here definitely to work on. There was our lazuli bunting and our red wing blackbird from yesterday over our watercolor. Mm, love that shiny copper. But today I thought it would be fun to maybe do some collage and do a little swatching and play with the gouache and then see what we can do with our bird. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is let me decide where this, hmm, so maybe the goldfinch is going to go here. We'll see. Maybe it's going to go over the, the collage and the, the swatches, but I think I'm going to put some collage down first and then I'm going to come back and add do some swatching with that gouache and just see what it looks like. So I'm starting with just some old book pages. This was from a children's book and I love the big um, print in it. These were some of the, the images that were in it. I love some of these little playful images. So get some of that beautiful kid-like energy in there. But then I also have some words from a poem. And because I want to paint over this, I'm going to just do black and white on my background. I was thinking that I might do a variety of colors and I have some, you know, other just cleaned off scrappy bits that could be interesting and will be interesting for collage. Like, this is a great piece. I might just cut out that whole interesting square there and stick it in my journal, but I think I want to stick with the black and white. So this is a page of stamped images from my found objects class. I think that was one of my most favorite classes to create. All right, as always, I probably have way more images than I have paper for, but that's okay. And I love starting my days playing in my art journal. And some days I feel the need to do some writing. I've been listening to sort of a, an audio class version 
uh, for the last two weeks of a book that I love, The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte. And so I have all of these ideas swirling around in my head and thoughts inspired by her Desire Map book, which is really all about how do I want to feel? So, so often we think about core values. I love working with core values. And we think about what do I need to do? And we forget to think first about, well, actually, how do I want to feel? And if I really determine how I want to feel, how does that change my goal setting, right? Or my dreams or even my time management, how I'm spending my time and my energy. And I think it's such a powerful reflection to do. And as I've been going through it, the, the process of this, and I did the book with a girlfriend a couple of years ago. So I'm going through it again, one day at a time, and it was so appropriate for this particular affirmation, which is allowing myself to take things one moment at a time and really going deeply into how do I want to feel and how do I not want to feel is just a fascinating personal inquiry. All right, just taking my time to get that down there. And it's more complicated than you would think, right? And we tend to fall easily into that trap of, well, here's how I don't want to feel and we might tend to focus on the negative. But when was the last time you really spent some time going within, doing some deep inner exploration, and asking yourself, how do I want to feel? Such a good question. How do I want to feel? She calls them your core desired feelings, your core desired feelings. And she had a free 10-day class on one commune. Actually, I think I'll that side up. And I'm making the words go different directions, mostly because I don't need to be able to, to read the words later, right? And I'm just focused on one side of the page here. I may come back and do the other side too, but we're just going to work on one side of our journal here. And I'm being very generous with my matte medium. I want to really get that down there flat, create a nice surface. And I'm thinking Mr. Goldfinch is going to get painted right over the top of the collage. So while that's drying, I'm going to come over here on this page and play a little bit with the, with the gouache just on this blank page. And I love the combination of the white whites and this kind of, you know, old school yellowed book pages that aren't 100% white. Not as many words on that one, but that's okay. And I am covering like pretty much every little bit of this page just because that feels kind of fun. Maybe we'll get this nice leaf shape down in that last little spot there. And because these papers are a little bit thicker, it also takes a little extra matte medium to hold them down. All right, so I'm going to let that collage dry for a minute. I'm thinking this one is going to become a, a tab on the edge. I haven't added any tabs for a few days, and I'm really loving the, the tabs in my journal. And I'm very curious about this wash here to see what it will do. So I'm going to experiment. So you never thought morning would be a good time to be creative when you began painting. Oh, I love that. It is a must, right? It's just, to me, it's just like exercise and healthy eating. To me, it's like my cup of coffee, right? It's like being, in, it's like prayer, right? Like all these meditation, all these different practices that nurture and support us. Our creative practice is just one. And when we can commit to that creative practice, we're committing to ourselves, and we commit to ourselves in one area. You'll often find that then you 
commit to yourself in another area as well. So gouache is similar to watercolor. It's water-based, but it dries matte and opaque. And if I remember correctly, it also dries solid. Like I don't know if once it's dry, you can reactivate it or not. But I'm just curious seeing what it does. So I like the, the top one there because it feels more opaque, like I'm used to painting with acrylic and it has kind of a, an interesting texture. So pardon my bumpiness for just a second here. I'm gonna just move my camera down a little bit. That one snafu with our software is that the, my little hover cam won't zoom in, but I wanna get a little closer to that gouache. All right. And I'm not wetting these first. I know that you can wet them very much like you would do with a watercolor. And I'm just picking a few greens to play with, and I just kind of want to get a sense of what it is that they're going to do. What happens if I just keep adding water? Almost as if I were just swatching out some watercolor there. The colors are gorgeous and rich. The texture is interesting. I've only played with gouache maybe once or twice before. And every time I buy any gouache, it ends up going home with Maggie when she comes to visit, which is fine because she loves it. All right. These colors are just beautiful. So big thanks to my friend Mary Rose who gifted me this beautiful set of gouache. And the colors are pretty. I definitely like that more opaque texture. I can see where, you know, it's drying there. It's a little bit thicker. And I'm wondering what it's like to maybe blend some of these colors. So I'm going to come in. Um, they are interesting to work with, and I haven't worked with them before. You love them. What is it that you love about them? Looks like they blend nicely as well, so that's good to know. They're just such a different consistency, right? They're such a different consistency. But yeah, look at those. Those colors are magical, and they do blend. Ooh, those two made an absolutely gorgeous purple there. All right, so a fun experiment for sure. I'm not going to make the time right now to swatch all of these, but before I started actually making an effort to paint with them, I wanted to kind of see what it is that they would do, what those colors look like. Oh, I love that, that crimson. This brush is pretty frayed at the ends. Working with the different hues that develop, that's kind of what happened there with that one, which is beautiful. I also love that they dry matte, because if they dry matte and permanent, then I can tangle over the top of them, like I love to do with watercolor as well. What else? So I'm curious about this nice sort of raw sienna there. And again, just noticing what they do with more water, less water. What happens when you mix them together? How fast do they dry? How much water do I need to add? So fun to play with something new and just try them. So I think that might be my playtime over the weekend is continuing to play with the gouache to see what it's going to do. And I'm super curious what happens if I come in and gesso over the top of it so it's not completely dry, so I know those colors are going to mix a little bit. Or I could just collage over this page if I wanted it to match the other page, but I'm not sure that matters. But what happens when we mix acrylic and gouache together? They do move when adding glazing medium. Okay, good to know.
All right. So now we have, well, that ended up being a super fun, just kind of crazy, colorful page. I love gesso, just pushes everything back and it's mixing with some of the gouache that's wet. Some of it you can still see through in different places, and that's kind of fun. So I'm just going to let that one get nice and dry. And we'll see what happens when it's dry. And I'm going to come back over here. And I saw someone post this fun idea where they had done a page of collage and then just painted a bird right over the top of the collage. And I kind of loved that idea. So I'm going to get this nice and dry. Try not to dry all my gouache over there. I think you do want to keep it tightly sealed so it stays nice and wet. All right, and I want to get Mr. that out of the way for just a minute. I like the container too. I like that it's probably portable. And I want to get my bird down on here, and I'm just going to cut some of this cardstock away. I'll save it for something else. Actually, little leftover pieces of cardstock like this are great for making your own tags in your journals or so I'm thinking I might do a, a tag um, that's all swatches of the gouache and stick it in my journal so I have that for another time but I want to just be able to see a little better where I want this guy to go and I'm just going to color over the back with some graphite or do I know I still have my white paper here. So I want to just quickly get him down on the page. I want to spend more time painting, less time drawing, because that is my preference. If you love to draw, feel free to hand draw. Let's see, I think I have some small pieces. Oh, our little goldfinch. I think this could even be smaller. Make sure we get him on the page. Isn't he a cute little birdie? He could even just get collaged in there because he is so pretty. So he might just end up being tucked in the journal. It's fun to save the photographs that I paint from. All right. And again, I'm just going for the shape of this guy. come in, add details later. But first we want to get that shape on there. His little bright orange beak and his little teeny tiny beady eye there. And his gorgeous black and white striped wings. Just making sure I get all of those details. I'm going to lift up and make sure. Oh, interesting. So my pencil is not sharp enough, and I'm not seeing any of that. And it may be, ah, it's because of the cardstock. Huh. Okay. Well, that was an interesting conundrum I hadn't expected. So let's see if I just do a little more pressure. Will I get it all the way through? There we go. Okay, so tracing with cardstock over graphite paper doesn't work. If I did the just color on the back of the bird and do that, that would probably work fine. But just noticing, right? Everything is an opportunity to learn and discover. All right, so we just needed a little more elbow grease in there to get our beautiful little goldfinch down on the page. 
trying to capture just the shape of him. And again, I'm noticing shapes, right? Like we did with our drawing practice the other day. Um, good morning, Yvonne. Welcome, welcome. We're working with a goldfinch and playing with gouache today. So look at this as a teardrop. We've got a triangle. His body almost looks like a, a lemon shape. It's a long oval. And then we've got another triangle here. So again, just noticing those shapes. OK, now I'm starting to be able to see him. And he's kind of holding on to the end of a branch here. And he's got these bright orange feet. And he's just perched on that little branch. And we'll start that branch in here. Again, noticing that with that cardstock, it is harder to use with the graphite paper. Definitely needed a lot of pressure. And we see these guys right outside our kitchen window. They sometimes will either come to our feeder or they will come to our, we have a pretty pine tree right outside. Unfortunately, the lid, OK, good to know. OK, awesome, good to know. So occasionally stir them and cover them up with plastic wrap. That is a great tip. All right, so I'm going to, where is my, I'm going to come back in with my Stabilo, I think, and just darken up those lines a little bit. And again, I'm just trying to get the shape of this guy, not going for perfection. I've got that teardrop shape on his head there, and his little tiny eye. And he has a very pointy little bird. And he's just a beautiful, beautiful little bird. And he's just holding on to this chair. Get that branch on the page. All right, so I'm going to put some matte medium over him to sort of seal in those black lines. And then I'm going to come back in and play with the gouache and see what I can make happen. Yeah, I haven't worked with uh, gouache yet. Well, I have. I shouldn't say that. It's been a couple of years. I was telling Blanca that my daughter loves gouache. It's her favorite medium. So she ended up with all the, the gouache. And which is fine um, because I, I didn't love it, but I think it just needs some trial and error. And a friend gifted me this set for Maggie and I to play with. Maggie's excited to have it here at home when she gets home this summer to visit. All right, so I've got him down there well enough. Let me hit this with the dryer. And remember, this is our mantra for today. I allow myself to take things one moment at a time. And this is what our creative practice is all about, right? We have to allow it to unfold. And this is what our own inner process of growth and discovery is as well. One moment at a time. We have to let things unfold that neither art nor our connection to our own self happens fast. We have to always stay in beginner's mind. All right, so curious to see what the gouache does over the top of the, the matte medium here. And this is a super simple little bird, right? He's not, I think, a smaller brush. He's not going to take very long to paint. I think I'm going to keep the, the, the gouache really opaque for the yellow part. So I want to get my little birdie here where I can see him. And he's actually a little bit more of a mustardy yellow. And I'm wondering if it's almost more like that. Ah, uh, that's a better color. So kind of these two mix together here. And I love painting over collage like this. 
having some transparency. So I've been having fun with different kinds of transparency on the channel this week and being able to see some of the marks in the collage below. This is a fun technique and I saw somebody else that had painted a bird over the top of the collage like this and I had thought that it was such a fun idea and that I wanted to give it a try. Also makes for a very makes for an interesting page but also a simple page. All right, looks like I have two blacks here. So I'm going to grab this little scrappy bit of cardboard and let's just ah that's not black. Look at that. That's that gorgeous indigo blue. It looked black in the light, so that means this is our pure black here. That's why it's really helpful to swatch out your colors when you're working with a new set of paints, either watercolor or gouache like this. This one also came with a nice little chart, but of course I didn't pause to read the read. Oh, and they're actually out of order from what it says in the chart too. So that's always interesting. All right, let's paint in this. little tiny eye and that little teardrop shape on his head. And we're going to come in with some of this black in here and then we'll get that black nice and dry. A little bit of that white as well. And I can let the paper be the, the white here too. That's kind of interesting but maybe I don't need to add the white, but he has a lot of white on his tail, but it's kind of nice just to maybe let those little bits show through. So that looks kind of interesting. And I'm mostly curious about what this is going to do when it dries, right? What's it going to look like? So the people love matte gouache because it is so matte. Uh, it's used for poster style and graphic style art. Most frequently is where I see people using gouache. Get that other little branch up there. It kind of sticks to the paper, right? It doesn't have quite the same flow as acrylics, especially because I'm using it pure and I haven't watered it down. I think I'd get a little bit better flow if I added a little bit more water to it. And this set did come with a nice little mixing palette here. So I kind of like this little bit of a creamy white. And I want to go in and just give that branch a little topping of white to just maybe give it just a little bit of dimension, a little bit of texture. Definitely feels like it can use a little more texture. So these mix really nicely, like I'm loving the way they're, they're mixing together. And that was too pink, but we're going to go with it. Just get a little barky like texture in there and then I'm going to come back in over the top I think with some of that darker brown again. Oh that's awesome that you uh, gifted yourself this set and you've been playing with it today. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Yeah it's very very interesting texture to work with. All right, and I think we need just a little touch of black using just the very, very edge of my brush. I'm using a flat brush, which is my favorite, is a flat brush, and get a little darkness on this. So we just have a little bit of dimension there. And it's interesting the way I did the collage. Look at those leaves, look like they're hanging off the branch there. Not intentional, just happen, but so fun the way those happy little accidents as 
good old Bob would say. All right. Of course, I'm getting paint on the back of there. You come off. So what's interesting is there's not really kind of a, a pure orange here. There's this kind of little bit of an orange. So let's just make a little bit of a really nice bright orange there. Oranges are always tricky. It's so easy to overdo it on the red. And you've got to start with a lot of yellow first and then carefully add in that yellow. It's funny, these little uh, black lines from the, the collage down here sort of ended up looking like his claws a little bit. But we're going to just kind of pretend that he's got some little claws there, not too much detail. But there's our cute little goldfinch, super simple page, super fun. Again, I saw this, uh, a friend of mine had posted something similar with a different bird online and the collage in the background. And I thought, well, that feels like a fun thing to try. And so I love that effect. And let's see. And I'm wondering if gouache is like watercolor, if it dries on the on the palette, if you can re-wet it later. I know um, I've heard my daughter say, and Blanca was saying, that you have to periodically just, you know, stir them up and wet them so that they stay wet and don't get too dried. I'm just going to brighten up those whites a little bit and give that tail a little bit more definition. Maybe just a little tiny bit of white on the head to make his little head stand out there. Now I have all this white on my brush. So again, I'm just curious, right, about what, it, what new materials look like, what new things end up being. Again, I really loved this affirmation and I think it's so appropriate for my own personal journey where I am in my life and in my business and I tend to get really impatient and I want things to move really fast and we just can't be impatient with either personal growth, business growth, or with our art and learning how to become a better artist, right? It all just takes time. And I think uh, patience has never really been one of my virtues. I do not like to stand in line. I don't like to wait for things. I am part of that culture that has been spoiled by instant gratification. And I'm trying to relearn the lesson of being patient and waiting for things. All right, so I'm going to put this tab over here on the side of this guy, get rid of that piece of paper that was protecting. What have we got? We have our nice little, this guy on the other side. So maybe I am going to just glue him right along the edge there, but on the inside of this page. I love that it's black and white and matches what's <clears throat> already down on the page. Haha, <laughs> Blanca guilty. <clears throat> yeah, I think we all are guilty of that. <clears throat> I blame Amazon, among many other things. But that ability to, you know, just get things so quickly into our hands or that we have such easy access to so many things. Okay, my paint's still wet, so I'm trying not to mess up that tail there. But I'm loving how this journal is coming out. It's getting nice and full. And i um, thinking that I'm ready to go a different direction for the rest of uh, June, or we're just starting June, we did some birds, but I think I am going to do a painting meditation practice this month, and where I'm just painting over and over on the same 
canvas and see what we can get to. And it might, you know, feel challenging to other people, but it's a process that I love and I always learn so much from and I haven't done in a long time. And starting next week, I'll send out an email as well. I'm going to move to summer hours. It's getting very toasty here, and I want to be able to walk in the mornings early. And so I'm going to be moving to 8 a.m. Mountain Time starting next week so that I can get out for my walks in the morning. And I will send out an email reminder about that. But happy Friday, my friends. Enjoy your weekend and um, have some fun maybe exploring, experimenting, and try new materials this weekend. So today we experimented with some gouache over collage. So I collaged the background with matte medium. Um, I did a little bit of swatching over here and then covered it up with gesso and so I'm very curious to come back later and see what I can do with this. I really loved these painty flowers that I was painting um, so I might just sit here and have a little fun painting with some flowers but have a beautiful beautiful rest of your day, rest of your weekend. Happy creating. This is Painting in Your PJs. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan and I will see you all next week. Bye my friends.